How's it going star seekers? Welcome back to the channel where today we're going to be taking a look at a game called The Long Return. A puzzle adventure game where you play as a cub who, guided by a mote of light, undertakes a journey to retrace the steps he took during his final trip out with his mother. But the road is long and arduous with many dangers and puzzles standing in your way, so let's get into this review and see whether it's worth the time and effort. So the long return begins atop a snowy mountain on a moonlit night. Our cub crawls from his hiding space and the journey begins. Now controls in the game are kept simple. We use our left thumbstick to move, B button to jump, and we can hold ZR to sprint. This opening area introduces us to the game's three main mechanics, the first of which are puzzles, which we can interact with by pressing the A button. The initial puzzle is a simple block pushing puzzle requiring us to move blue blocks in order to reach the glowing exit circle, and upon doing this, the puzzle is complete and we're able to move onward. The second gameplay element are diamonds which can be found throughout the journey as we interact with our surroundings, and these include patches of snow, different types of animals, flowers and mushrooms, and the diamonds then act as currency to buy hints for puzzles, and they generally provide you with an idea of the first few movements you need to take, indicated by lines drawn on the puzzle. The third gameplay element were introduced to our environmental hazards, as boulders roll the way down the mountainside towards us. We encounter a number of other hazards, but the main one which is likely to catch you out is water if you miss time jumps, but luckily being hit by boulders or falling in water only costs you a single diamond and instantly respawns you. So as we continue onward on our journey, we slowly make our way down the mountain, solving puzzles and collecting diamonds as we go. Further along, we experience our first memory in the form of a holographic mother and cub, which guide us along to the next zone. And upon completion of zones, we're shown how many diamonds we managed to find and how many times that we died. Next, our journey takes us to Frosty Lake, where we find ourselves hopping from iceberg to iceberg and solving a new kind of puzzle where we have to break ice platforms to open the way forward. Now, new puzzles are gradually introduced as we work our way from area to area, and there's some decent variety to them. Much like Jonathan Blow's phenomenal puzzle game The Witness, you're given no guidance on the rules of each new puzzle and have to work them out for yourself, though I will say that their overall complexity is relatively simple and you should have very little issue with any of them to begin with. So the opening few areas of the game are pretty linear in design, but eventually you get to a vast open meadow which allows you a little freedom. Here you find a selection of puzzles which can be solved in any order, including a large maze to get lost in, and a bit of a tussle with a huge floating orb. And puzzle complexity also begins to take a step up in this area with new variations on existing puzzles thrown into the mix. Now I don't want to spoil too much of the game in this review, so I'm going to keep it a little shorter than usual, but what I will say is that I was pleasantly surprised by the long return. I thought the low poly environments were all pretty beautiful, and Max Nielsen, the game's solo developer, did a great job with them. Yeah, they're a little rough around the edges if you look close enough, but overall the quality was very good. Nielsen also did a fantastic job of telling the game's story without using words, as you follow each memory fragment to the final conclusion. Now supplementing the wonderful visuals, we also get an excellent original soundtrack by composer Dale North. Each level in the game gets its own track to match the mood and situation our cub finds himself in, and I thought the Long Return's music sort of sounded like a mixture between the indie adventure game Journey's soundtrack and something from a Studio Ghibli movie, both of which should be taken as huge compliments. Now ironically, the Long Return is not actually a long game and it clocks in at around 2-3 to three hours game time depending on how fast you solve the puzzles. And while the long return was an absolute joy to play, I do have a couple of minor criticisms. Firstly, with the game's jumping mechanics, which do feel a little clunky and caused a few deaths throughout my run. And secondly, while I enjoyed the puzzle elements, I also felt at times that they made the game feel very stop-start. I would have loved some more wide open areas to run across, just like in the aforementioned journey, and it would have also been great to see more puzzles involving the environment and maybe a few more dangers along the way. In all though, there's not much I can fault with the long return. Nielsen and North did a great job with bringing the game's story to life, and if you enjoy games like Journey or Abzu and don't mind a little puzzling along the way, then I highly recommend you give the long return a go. So now we come to rating the game. 
No, I rate games between 1 and 5 stars, with the Shovelware stamp of approval reserved for the worst games on the eShop. This rating is based on my own personal opinion on the quality and quantity of a title's gameplay, and whether I think it offers value for money to potential buyers. For a rating, I'd give The Long Return 4 out of 5 stars. The Long Return is short and sweet, but I feel it's one that will stick with people who play it as being memorable for both its beautiful polyvisuals and excellent musical score. You can get the game from the UK Switch eShop for £7.19p, but for some reason I'm not yet seeing a price for it on the US eShop. Alternatively, the game's also available on Steam. And that's it for this review of The Long Return. Don't forget to hit that like button if it helped you out, and leave your thoughts and opinions in the comments section below. Shout out to the patrons who are going that extra mile to support the channel, I really appreciate it. And you can find a link to the channel's Patreon page in the description box below if you want to check it out. As always, don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed this review and want to see more, and hop onto the Starseekers Discord server to join its growing community. For now though, I just want to say thanks once again for watching, and until next time, take care and game on.